Hello, everybody, and welcome to Spiritual Talk. Uh, well, this is our Christmas special, Leanne, isn't it? Yay! Hi! Hi, everybody. Let us know you're there, guys. Let us know you're watching. Um, well, I'm live from my cabin as usual, but I think, Leanne, you're live from Mrs. Brown's living room. <laughs> Santa's Grotto. <laughs> Santa's Grotto. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I looked everywhere today for um, a Christmas jumper. I couldn't find it, or even an elf's hat. Nothing. So this is all I could find for my my Christmas. Sorry. Well, I, I've nicked my baubles off my Christmas tree. <laughs> and I did come equipped with an elf hat, but because I have a green screen, all I've got is my bell because it's not showing up. I'll just look like I've got a red room and big ears. Yeah, yeah. So, I like it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. So we've got an interesting guest tonight, haven't we? And, the, yes, we and have. tonight for the Christmas special, we're going to do some mediumship tonight. Uh, and myself and the guests are going to work so that's going to be really interesting so stick around for that guys we'll get you in the studio if you want to come in yeah, and, we'll and i'm not sitting here doing nothing i'm just sending out lots of love to everyone cool cool yeah. cool uh so do you want to talk you. about our guest tonight then yes, got a great guest tonight. To. so our guest tonight comes from belfast and she's the lovely maria pat fitzpatrick she is a spiritual medium she does trance medium uh, she's a tutor and a Reiki master. This lady's got it all going on. And she also is passionate about physical mediumship. So Brilliant. it's going to be a very interesting evening. So should Brilliant. we bring her on? Yeah, without further ado, here she is. Yeah. Hi, Marie. Hi, oh, everybody. I'm panicking there in case I lost you. Uh, still oh, here. Oh, lovely. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. I'm hoping the broadband signal will get a bit stronger as we go along because it's a little bit um, sort of misty. But normally uh, what happens after a little while, it clears and it gets a bit stronger. you just got to get the kids off the broadband. That's all it is. Get them <laughs> to get off the more. gaming. <laughs> Shouldn't be Christmas shopping now. That's done. <laughs> We've hit our deadlines. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, welcome to Spiritual Talk, Marie. Uh, thank you for coming on. We're really looking forward to interviewing you. And also, thank you for agreeing to work tonight. Some people are not keen on doing lives. It can be quite difficult doing mediumship in a, in a live audience. But we're really, I'm really looking forward to working with you. So thank you for agreeing to work. But can we talk about you first and, and, and your journey into mediumship? Where did it all begin for you? Um, well, when at a few, when I was younger, I did have a few sightings, if you want to call it. Um, I remember one time telling my mom there was a man in the bedroom, and she says, "Well, then tell me about him, describe him." And I described him, and she dropped her cup. She says, "Who told you about him?" And I says, "Nobody, mummy." And she says, "That's my dad." Now, we have no photographs of him still to this day because all my grandparents died before I was even born. So um, I don't have any photographs of him. So I described him. My mum my mom at that time, it was just like, OK, well, you know, don't don't talk about it. That's OK. So I didn't. Then as I got older, um, as I say, it's not like you see them everywhere. It's not like in the movies where they just pop up. It's not that type of thing. But then um, my journey really began when my mum my mum was diagnosed and my mum was passing with cancer and I just knew at that time also um, my nephew had taken his own life and my uncle had all died so there was a, within three months we'd lost three people and it really made me think well if I'm so low and um, at this point there has to be a way where I can also help others to share that to let them know that this isn't the end to let them know that there's a bit of healing out there to let them know that their loved ones aren't really gone, that there is that bit of help for them. There's that wee bit of reassurance. And my idea at that time was, well, if I can stop one person from feeling as low as I did, well, then I'm helping in some small way. So I really got into my journey, studied mediumship and literally got three into the deep end and was out doing readings literally within the year. So it was so I really just pushed myself. Yeah. Wow. So that, yeah, that was well that that was very quick transition. What, so, how did your family receive that then? The idea of you working in this way? Um, well, before my dad used to, he used to call me his wee witch <laughs> in a nice way. <laughs> um, it was like he used to call me his wee witch. Um, 
they weren't too bad they didn't really um they didn't really take much to do with it it was near enough like i don't think because they fully understood it or they were fully aware of what was going on as time went on then they did um and they would ask questions about it which is not a problem some of them would even come to some of the demonstrations and all my all my children um they know they're supportive of what i do um my husband as well and lately we did a big uh, fundraiser for the Chest, Heart and Stroke Association and all my children were there. They attended, they supported, they done ballots, they done the tea, they introduced everybody, they brought the um, people into the room. So it's it's a big family, it's a big part of me, so it's a big part of my family. Oh, yeah. that's really lovely because sometimes it can be quite hard if people don't understand where you're coming from and what you well, do. It, I think for my my dad was probably the hardest. It's like he didn't really want to talk about it. He just called me, "Are you doing that witchy stuff?" Or you know, "You're a wee witch," you know, and that was it. And that was fine, but that was his way of joking. But yet, before he passed, he told every nurse in the hospital, "My Marie's one of them medium people. My Marie's one of them medium people." So <laughs> I think he had more faith in it than what he really than really let on. Yeah. Wow. So, do any of your children show signs? definitely <laughs> definitely uh-huh um my uh, some of my oldest ones do but they just don't want they just don't want to use it and that's okay uh my youngest daughter because at that time um i was told i couldn't have no more children and then i found out one day that my mom was dying and found out the next day i was pregnant wow oh. so it was and the doctor the doctor was joking me says you've def you've you went against all medical evidence. I don't know what to say. And I went, well, I know this has been sent to keep me going. So they told me that my mum would never see my daughter, that she would only have a few months to live. And I knew Spirit was telling me, she will, she will. So I says to the doctor, okay, well, you have your beliefs and I have mine. My mum got to hold my daughter and got a few photographs with her. So um she lived eight weeks after my daughter was born so that was something yeah so yeah. my daughter will talk about her my daughter will say even growing up didn't granny do this didn't granny do that and she was only eight weeks old and I was going I never told you that why would I even think of that actually you know and she was talking about things that I'd forgot about or things from my childhood and I brought her down one time when I was working in a center and I says to her do you want to get up with me? Because it was it was a family centre. And she says to me, yeah. And she got up and she gave a link. And she not after that. It was just like, okay, now can I go? You know, it's like, yeah, okay. So she really loves it. She's really into it. And I think if there's anyone that's going to maybe follow my footsteps, it'll be her. Oh, oh wonderful. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So how about telling us about um, how do you see do, when you – um help people become on their spiritual pathway for mediumship and that do you see their potential before they've come to you or do you just work with them when they come along yeah that's that's a great sorry that's a great question because some people well i think ju the, the jump from being a medium into being a tutor some people are not ready for and some people go too early so kind of managing that as well and understanding when you're ready to be a tutor was that a process a part of that as well oh definitely i think it takes time i think you need a lot of time to develop yourself because you know i'm not a great fan and what i would call microwave mediums where you sort of <laughs> for six months and then pop up and think you're a tutor so I um, courses and that's it yeah yeah and you know i call it like i call them microwave mediums it's like oh, a, a course and it's like 30 30 days later they're teaching and they're whatever and for me and it's not that i'm judging i just believe you need to have a lot of experience you need to be able to tune into that person to see are they ready to learn to see you know because with people with this type of work there's a lot of fear with it. even yes. I, even around it now there's a lot of fear there is a lot of um not not people not fully understanding and i have you know and in particular there's two of my classes and i can think of two people and when they came to me they could hardly say their name wow it's like they they could they stood up and i remember she tried to say her name and she was in tears and that brought me right back because that's the way i was 
that's the way I was. And it takes that bit of building their confidence, tuning in with them. And some people, yes, will take tell it like a Dr. Water will be amazing. But others need that wee bit of reassurance. They need that bit of confidence that, you know, spirit world will work with them, that the spirit world is patient and they don't need to rush through something in 30 days. They don't need to rush through something. They can take their time and learn at whatever stage you're at. And I think as a tutor, you need to accommodate all sorts. You need to be patient with the ones that need that wee bit of extra confidence. And as a tutor, I will always, always, always only build one of my one of my pupils up I would never knock them down I will if there is any criticism I will always sort of in a positive way in an encouraging way Mm -hmm. because I believe that every tutor has that big responsibility because you are holding someone's journey in your hands and you can make it or break it so for me I just feel tune in tell them if somebody needs that wee bit of extra encouragement well then work with them be patient with them let them evolve at their own time let them just work their way through and be there to help them on whatever steps they need yeah absolutely i'm just going to say somebody has just come on um and just uh, i can't see it it's gone into the group someone just said hi marie great to see you. you're an incredible medium just thought i'd share that with you thank you <laughs> I think that was Thomas Wyatt. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. And Ashley's just put an exceptional tutor. <clears throat> so, I mean, it must be also because we interviewed Ashley last week. It must be also be a, a proud moment for you as well to see those that you've you've nurtured be, to, to be doing so well. Oh, it's amazing. Um, Ashley and Thomas both sat in my class. Thomas is now out doing a lot of work himself. And Ashley, the thing she's been doing, and I love it. I personally, I personally love it. I can't emphasize enough. I say to my students, come on, there's enough spirit out there. Come on, we can all do that bit. We can heal the more people is out there talking and spreading that word. Yeah. And because when you're giving messages, it, it is healing. It, it is a healing aspect of it. And I just think the more of my pupils can get it, get out there and work, I love it. I, I just love it. And I'm so proud of each and every one of them. Yeah. Yeah, it's, well, it's, quite, it's quite evident. Your passion for teaching and your passion for what you do is quite evident. It just, it just comes through what you're saying, how you're saying it. So that's a wonderful thing. And I, and I always say to people that, that come into – mediumship that want to develop if you're not inspired every day by being touched by the essence of spirit then then it's not for you a hundred percent um you have to have that i believe that you have to feel it you have to be inspired and it's not something you take on lightly this job this sort of work is for life it it touches every aspect of your life you have to feel that with the people that you work with there has to near enough be that counseling aspect with you you need to know how much you can talk to that person you need to know hard to talk to that person and it's for me it is it is my life it's a big part of my life and i think it will be for a long long time <laughs> yeah so do you ever when you're doing your courses and stuff and you've got somebody there for learning like mediumship and they show you can feel that they're going to be a lot stronger and maybe in another modality or something do you let them know that and nurture them on that way or do you continue with the mediumship or if they want mediumship and they're insistent i will certainly help them okay but if i'm also guiding them or talking to them i will maybe say tell them okay well have you looked at this aspect of mediumship or have you tried why don't you see and see if that fits see if you like that also because if if like me I, I you know i love my tarot i love my angel cards i love my mediumship i love my reflexology i love palmistry crystals reiki you name it i love a bit of everything okay and but i always come back where mediumship will be and teaching has been my life but i will do treatments and everything else with it but if i feel somebody is has a strength or and maybe they're not aware of it yet i will certainly do my best to bring that out to nurture it for them so that they do become aware of it so that i can I can bring their wee bit of passion or their bit of light into their life and give them the wee strength and maybe help put them on the right path. Yeah, definitely. That's lovely, isn't it? Because sometimes you'll get, you'll see it in front of you and not be aware of it. And if somebody else can see it for you and then you're allowed to nurture it, that's really lovely. Oh, yeah. 
definitely. Um, you know, I was told, oh, you'll be a medium. And I was like, no. Oh, you'll talk in front of hundreds of people. No, I won't. No, I won't. I won't. No, I won't. Oh, you will. Oh, you'll be doing this. I said, no, no. And then gradually, bit by bit, it all unfolded. But it's always will unfold when the timing is right. Yes. Because if I had have been doing maybe things or it wouldn't have worked, I wouldn't have been in the right headspace, I wouldn't have been ready for it. And I always believe what's for you won't go past you. And it's near enough like things will unfold when you're ready and when, when the timing is right. I've literally got a gentleman standing beside me who just asked me to ask you a question, which I've never had before, which is quite interesting. So it must be quite relevant. Okay. Um <laughs> What inspired you on your own path to development? You know, you said that someone had said to you, oh, you know, you're going to be doing messages. You're going to be a medium yourself. But what inspired you on your path? What, what, who was your inspiration or, or tutor? Or was it, was it something from a book? Was it philosophy? Was there something that really grabbed you? I think it was a bit of everything. Um, I had done so many courses. I had went to a lot of people. I did sit in circle um, with, uh, a medium and you know she did encourage me and things like that but I also felt when I was given messages I could see the relief or I could see how much it touched people or I could just see you know you're helping you're healing you're taking a wee bit of pain away you can never fully take the pain away when someone loses someone and I just feel there'll always be that grief but if you can maybe leave them especially with a bit of laughter or feeling that wee bit lighter for me, I went, this is what I want. I know partially what it's like to hit rock bottom. I know what it's like to lose people. And for when I got a message, it was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and that's what I want to give people in return. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to help. And that really drove me on to, to study, to practice, to meditate, to go out and do one-to-ones. To, to anybody that wanted a reading, I go, I read you, I practice, I'll do this, I'll do this. I really wanted to get out there so that I could, not the, not the best for me, but so that I could work the best for spirit, so that I could do the best to show maybe their way of working so that I could then go forward and let other people feel their presence or let them know you're not on your own. No, you're not on your own. Your spirit, your loved ones are with you. That beautiful connection that you had, it's still here. Okay. Maybe not in the, the form that you're used to, but if you just sit still for a moment, you can feel their presence, think about them and they're there. They're literally a heartbeat away. So that really inspired me. And this this is the problem of mediumship, though, because a lot of people seem to think that it's really full on it, it, in your face. It is subtle. Definitely. It's blending. It takes um, commitment. It takes patience. It takes well, so many different faculties that you need to become a medium to, to develop. Patience is definitely one of them. Oh, and, definitely, definitely. But as a as a developing medium, then you've got those that are constantly negative, like you, what you're doing, this is rubbish. You know, how do you deal with those negative aspects of people, fam whether they're family members or or friends? You know, I've lost friends because of what I do. You know, um, that's okay, but that's obviously it's not for them, and I totally understand. Well, I totally understand that too. I have lost friends along the way also because they, they don't understand. And sometimes the way I look at it, you can explain to people till you're blue in the face. And there'll be those that will be those that will be interested and want to believe. But there will be those that it's just no matter what you do, no matter what evidence you show them, no matter what you give them, they just don't want to know. So the way I look at it when I lose people or what, dealing with the negativity, for those that are meant to be in my life, they will come into my life. And when they leave and if they leave, they will have taught me something along the way. They will have taught me to be stronger. They will have taught me to stick to my beliefs. They will have taught me my passion for spirit will not be dampened, no matter who can be negative, because they're allowed their opinion. Opinion, and I will respect anybody's opinion but at the same time I also ask that in return all I ask is you respect mine and I'll respect yours if you don't if you're not interested that's fine but um I, I just sort of don't I don't let the negativity affect me anymore I just don't yeah. Maybe starting out, um, it's hard to deal with. It's like, you know, when you get your nose, when you're starting out, it's like, ah, oh, how do I deal with the nose? But it's not, it's like you just learn to deal with them and you work your way around because you know what you're getting for a reason. You might have misunderstood yes. it or misinterpreted, but yeah. you're getting it. So 
for me, I just stick with it and I don't let the negativity, I just don't listen to it because I believe if you feed it, it'll, it'll affect you more. So I don't I just and, sort of wish people all the best and whatever choice they make, let it be. And that's and that's the thing, for, especially for people that are developing. There's people that will will kind of pull your energy down to a lower level, you know, and, and put that. And I think as a developing medium, that, that word doubt is our even even working mediums that word doubt is our biggest enemy definitely you know because you think about it we are dealing with something that not not everybody can see this yeah. is it's this hard it's not like we come on when you stand up in front of a crowd we don't have a script we don't know who's going to come through we don't know you know it's like you have to get up and you have to trust trust yeah. is a big thing so if you have someone that is putting doubt in your head or maybe you're doubting yourself that is your biggest fear okay yeah. and for me i believe you know what give it give it out do your best you know you're doing it from the heart you're doing it with the best interest and spirit will never let you down okay for me it's like well i hope they don't let me down tonight but it's near <laughs> yeah. enough. i just feel they'll never let you down so it's near enough like um yeah go with it and just trust and always try and take someone's fears away i sort of with my if there's any of my students that have that doubt because i think every medium will have it on their journey no matter what i think we all go through a stage where we doubt ourselves we doubt you know can i do this we doubt oh maybe spirit doesn't want to work with me anymore okay we all have some doubt at some stage and you'll find out that mostly it can be your own life that's affecting it maybe what's going on in your personal life that's making you feel a wee bit down as well so for me i try and concentrate okay well look at this link you give where did that information come from look how much you've already done how can you out that because you didn't know this person you didn't know yeah. that where did that information come from so i try and turn their doubts into a bit of positivity to rebuild them again yeah that's that's right. yeah i think that's we definitely great. um humans in general definitely stand in our own way and we block ourselves more definitely if we allow ourselves just to be in the heart space and flow it's amazing but, but yeah but yours is such a natural, you are such a natural healer, Leanne, in terms of your own development. And I'm not going to ask you a question. It's almost, it just comes, you're, you've kind of allowed and you've opened that door, have got rid of any self-doubt that you've had and you allowed that energy to flow through you. Yeah, it wasn't always like that. <laughs> okay, That's so you, you had, uh, maybe, yeah, I need to get you back on here, don't I, an interview you at some point again. <laughs> But uh, all of us in general, I just think everyone, even whether it be on a spiritual pathway or just generally in life, I think we all hit um, what I call like blippy moments and it kind of makes everything just stop, doesn't it? And you yeah. can't see the light through the trees because you're just, you're in that moment. And especially like this time of year, like we were talking about earlier on, you just yeah. don't, you don't see sometimes any light around and yeah we just we, we had, close ourselves down yeah there's been i mean obviously this, i don't want to go into too much of what's happening out there at the moment but there's there's so much going on at the moment there's so many people reaching out for help so you know but i always find that a lot of people go through these difficult blips as you say because it is also a part of their own personal development they'll go up to the next level after they've had that blip oh, but yeah. guys we should we've been going 23 minutes so we've not Ask the audience to, to send yeah. us questions. Tell so you guys, feel like we were sitting around a coffee table. <laughs> table <didn't work. laughs> yeah. If if you're bold enough, guys, we are going to work tonight. So we're really looking forward to that. So we'd love you to share. Keep sharing, please. Um, but if you'd like to come in and ask, we don't think we've ever done this before. If you'd like to come in and ask Marie a question, you're more than welcome. We'll put the links up so you can see it, and I'll copy and paste it as we're going along. But we've had a couple of questions come in already. Uh, Sean, <coughs> hi, Sean. She's got a question here. When on your spiritual journey do, you, uh, do spirit take you um, at the speed they feel is best for you when opening up to them is that something you found although your own experience it happened really quickly my own experience did happen really quickly but i think that's because from a young age i ignored it an awful lot and then when sort of a traumatic event happens mine sort of just like it spiraled okay but i do believe that spirit will take you on a journey and take you at your speed 
I, I just feel they'll never give you more than what you can handle. So if they feel it, they have to be taken slowly, then they'll work slowly with you. OK, and you have to be prepared for that as well, because some people haven't got the patience. It's like, oh, but I want to do this and I know I can do this and they can. But you got to remember with this, there's a lot this work. There's a lot of emotion with it as well. And there's a lot of self growth with it. And spirit, I think, will only move you forward when you're ready to do so. So I think it's at their speed. As and I do believe that they would know better than us. Yeah, right. Um, and they'll so. keep going until you get the message. <laughs> yes, and if you don't, they'll just keep hammering at you. They'll just keep coming back until you do. Okay, and it's like everything. We keep going to walk away. You know, there's sometimes we go, okay, I'm not doing this. You know, life's too hard. Can't do this and whatever. But they always pull you back. It's like they give you that wee rest that is needed, and then they'll get you back on top. Oh. Sorry, guys. I don't know what just happened there. As you were talking, I just said that my light started flashing on and off. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> no, I'm sure you. I'm sure you're on the set of Mrs. Brown's. Didn't Mrs. Brown's boys have a ghost in their uh, in their their Christmas special? Didn't they? So maybe oh, most girls got... through were going. Are you listening to this, Leanne? Are you listening to us? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We've got lovely Carol Phillips has just popped in, so we're going to bring Carol in to ask a question. Hi, Carol. Hi, Paul. Hi. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yes. perfectly. Loud and clear. <laughs> okay. um, I tend to think that I'm um, too empathic. Empathetic? Empathetic. Yeah. Yeah. It is. yeah. Um, how do you stop um, taking so much in? Because I find so much disturbs me um that i read and it plays over and over and over and i i'm i'm wondering if that's stopping me stopping the spirit working with me because i feel so sad for things sometimes okay so um sometimes like if you're doing a reading you would take that pain with you and even after your client has gone you're still feeling that pain you're still aware of that and you're still clinging on to it for me, it's about grounding yourself a wee bit more and learning how to dis make that disconnection so that when your client goes, it's near enough like cutting yourself off from them. Because if you don't, if you will take on all that. You'll take on pain, you'll take on heartache. And sometimes it's a wee bit overwhelming for you, where you'll, mm. find, like, you'll actually feel a wee bit down or you'll feel a wee bit like maybe not even wanting to work this far because just looking at you i know at the minute there's a, a big wave of emotion with you okay and i know that recently you have been a wee bit upset if you don't mind me saying okay and i know that they are <laughs> to work with you but i also know that there's a lot of healing that has to come from within with you if that's okay and i just yeah. like learning it's you being that wee bit not tougher but being that wee bit more determined as well with your work and saying okay I can't afford to take one to it's when you drink the water, disconnect, and in yourself once to go. And if you're not thinking in that wee bit firm with spirit as well, knowing that when you are working and knowing when you aren't, okay, and having that discipline, which is I have this is my workspace, and that is my home space. Like disconnecting the two. Right, so it's just sort of um compartmentalizing yes exactly it's separating it um and as i say I tell you when you're finished literally sometimes it depends if you're a visual person if you can sort of even represent when that person goes it's like cutting the cords like letting go of their issues of their heartache of, of whatever stress they're under so that it doesn't attach to you so that you don't take it with me and then even maybe this includes yourself in white light drink plenty of water and ground yourself through the mountain and that will separate it for you that will give you that connection away from your mountain. yeah because i'm just starting to um sit in the power a lot and i'm really really wanting um uh to meet my guide or a guide okay and um i'm just wondering if it's holding back because of this i get so upset i i, I physically cry at things that i hear on the news and things and well i remember wanting to meet my guide and i think i was the only one out of my class who hadn't met my guide and everybody had met the guide and was needing them and and I hadn't, and I didn't know who mine was. And I was getting upset. I was like, why does he not want to talk to me? And then when I went into meditation, I always seen a fire, and I tried to joke around the fire to see where my guide was. 
and I couldn't see it, so that was fine. So what I what they were teaching me again learn to grow, learn to deal with what you're coping with, you know, take it in tiny chunks, okay? Because if you're already feeling overwhelmed and then maybe you're doing a meditation and then meeting a guide on top of that along with everything else, there can be a wee bit too much. So take it in baby steps. Yeah. You know, and let them let them meet you, let them do it. Do a meditation to meet your guide when the time is right, they will appear, they will show themselves, but only when the time is right. And don't be so hard on yourself, okay? <laughs> this is the journey of experience, of time, of love, of healing. Be gentle with yourself too, okay? And let them work with you. And you'll make yeah. a lot of medium, things will work out. Just be gentle. Yeah. It's brilliant. Thank you. You're very welcome, Carl. I've been talking to you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Carol. Thank you. Yep. Okay. <laughs> That's my voice. But Merry Christmas, Carol. And you all. Merry Christmas to all of you. Christmas. Bye. Bye. Bless her. Do you see someone try to come in on the set uh, onto her? Yeah, She's like, oh, no, yeah. no. That's always <laughs> funny. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. So we've had a few people comment, uh, and there's other questions. Uh, I can't. Oh, uh, Sean has asked another question. How do you ground yourself? There is different ways. What you can do is literally visualize yourself feet on the ground and you can literally visualize roots coming out of your feet into the ground. OK, it's like having that firm, having that firmness. It's like letting go and putting all your energy into the ground, let it flow through your body, let it come through your feet. OK, and you can do meditations for it as well. And plenty of water. Water will always ground you as well. OK, yeah. and cleansing. I love being beside the water, even on stormy days. You know, there's nothing better than sort of standing in Mother Earth and, and grounding yourself in nature, you know, so you can do that. Put your feet in the water, go for a walk along a beach. Doesn't matter if it's blowing the head off you. Enjoy it. OK, but it's like having that wee bit of connection back as well mm. definitely <laughs> so ashley's asked you a question what is the most amazing phenomenon you have experienced in physical mediumship oh the most amazing okay is being touched and having a, a child climb on my knee a, a child physically um climb on my knee as for a child so that blew me away um, scared me a wee bit to be honest, but um, it was like, whoa, is that, no, one of them ones the chair is against the wall. Oh, but to feel a physical, a child in spirit physically climb onto your knee, feel their tiny little hands that that's the most amazing for me. That blew me. Can, away. I, can I stop you there, Marie? Can you set the scene for people at home? Where was you? How was you doing this? What actually happened? Okay, um, I had went to a workshop, a physical workshop, okay, seance, okay, okay. And um, that night there was a seance and we were in it. And so there, there may be some stuff. people at home with, that won't even understand a seance. Could, can you go back to basics? Was there lights on? Okay. Was there lights off? There will be uh, there will be some of it was taking place in darkness. And when it's taking place in darkness, everyone will have to hold hands to make sure nobody can move and things like that to make sure nobody can get up and walk about or to, so that everybody knows where everybody is. OK, there is other parts that will be done in like a red light so that people can see some things but with physical everybody in the room will see it it's not just one person if there's something that's going to be seen everybody in the room will see it and that's the difference yeah and for me that time um we were in a room and there was a crowd and it was dark we were all holding hands um you know, we were singing and this i felt the hand and i knew there was nothing behind me only a, a solid brick wall but this hand came from behind me first of all and touched me on the shoulder and that was fine. And then there is toys for the spur children to play with, um, drums to bang, and there's trumpets. Trumpets were flying in the air as well, and everybody in the room seen them, not just me. So trumpets were flying, and there was hula hoop going around the room as well. And then I felt the tiny little hands. T you could tell they were baby fingers, tiny little fingers. And they touched, and the next thing I felt them climbing up under my knee. And it was... I have never felt a power or an experience like it. It touched me from within and it really, I suppose it really hit me. This is real. And even though I know when I talk and I, I teach this, it was like, that was a point in my life where it was like, oh, this, this, this is it. So for me, that was a big turning point. Wow. And it was beautiful. Beautiful. 
see we're, we're going live on facebook we're going into youtube and um, also twitter and there'll be some people out there going how do you know that was real how do you know that wasn't someone sitting on your knee i'm sorry i'm i'm, just, I'm playing devil's advocate I'm sat, okay. yep. I'm sat in physical i've had i've had some interesting experiences i do not doubt you for one bit but there will be those inevitably at home um yeah, so I guess my question is, how would you explain, how could you explain it logically? You can't really, can you? No, a, you can't, but when we done it, we were allowed to check the room. We were allowed to check the medium. We were making sure, and, and trust me, I'm nosy. I, I like, I, my husband would call me the skeptical medium at times because I like to make sure um, we, you know, make sure the medium was cable tied down, made sure everything, and everyone was holding hands, and everyone had the, you know, say that. But this was a child, and there was no children in the building, and you can tell the difference between an adult, and a, I, I have five grandchildren. Trust me, I can tell the difference between an adult hand and a baby hand, and this was a tiny little hand, and this Bobby just sat in my knee. So, I know some people might go, yeah, maybe you imagined it, but I didn't. I felt it and I knew and it gave me an experience that lasted with me that I'll never forget and also made me aware of how, power, how powerful spirit can be. Yes, absolutely. And unless you've really experienced it, it's difficult for us to sit here. We we can flippantly say because we've done it, we sat in trance, we sat yeah. in physical and, and we can just sit here like we're all just sitting in the same room and talk yeah. about this thing. There's a lot of people out there that do not understand the power or, or the essence of spirit. Or even when we talked about giving messages earlier, you know, I see it in people's eyes when the first time they give a message from a discarnate soul that's in yeah. a different reality. And they're like, did I just communicate with that yeah. person? And it just, it can profoundly change people. So when you go into a circle, a physical circle, it, it's yeah it's i mean it's it's an experience isn't it and but the, i guess another question is trying to find a physical circle for those people out there that want to develop is also quite difficult is there any tips that you could give for people that are wanting to sit in that type of circle and also for me it's about their motivation why do they want to sit in that is is that mediumship or is it just the experience of spirit well, yeah, I think intent, you know, if you just want to sit in a circle just to sort of see what happens or whatever, for me, that's not the right intention. For me, it has to be that aspect of wanting to work for spirit, allowing them to have their time. And I do feel, and there will, not everybody, I don't think, will have the ability for physical mediumship, okay? But I do believe that if you can get a group of people and maybe allow them to take time to sit, especially if it's only beginning, see where the energy happens most, see what is happening around you when certain people are sitting, pay attention to hard feels, what are you seeing, what are you noticing, and allowing, because the physical mediumship, if you're sitting in circle, the energy has to build, okay, and if you're sitting there, it has to be that dedication, it can't be, oh, I'll go this week, no, I'll not go that week, or oh, I'll go and see if something will move this week, that's not what it's about, it's showing spark the dedication, it's showing spark that you're going to be there, and I think that's why even going back to the older mediums, you know, the, they were so um, dedicated, you know, and I don't think we even see as much phenomenon as we did in the day, and yeah. I just wish that would come back, but I think it's because people don't have the patience or the determination or the dedication to sit, because it's not something you can develop overnight, you know, and it might even take longer than mental mediumship. This is something that you have to show dedication to. And I think it's reflective of modern times in terms of everything we have today is pretty much we get it instantly. We can't, yeah. like my parents... Mm -hmm. When they bought new furniture for their home, they would save up for it. Because today we put it on a credit card. Yeah. Or, you know, so in terms of how that reflects on society, I guess, I mean, look at the churches. Unfortunately, the spiritual churches are not in a great way in terms of attendance. Yeah. How do we raise that? How do we get more people connecting to spirit? How do we get more people that are wanting to sit and dedicate? I mean, personally, I think that will change over time. But it is so difficult to find in the right people with the right intention and also the right tutor, the right teacher as well. 
but I also think as well that sometimes the doors have to be open and there has to be maybe allowance for change. And some people don't want change, and that's the difference. Mm-hmm. But this is a changing world. The way Spirit is working with us is changing. The way we're growing is changing. The way we're even talking and working now, it's an instant world. But if we can get the doors open and educate people and show them and take away the taboo subject of maybe spiritualism or mediumship and, and show them that it's not just about, oh, talking to dead people it's it's not about it's a whole lot more than that and if we can bring that into the community that can realize how much healing can be done how much help can be given to each community and i think instead of maybe being selective who comes in keeping the keeping the doors open to everybody okay yeah. and teaching everybody and and maybe just not being sometimes so maybe strict or maybe so coming across maybe a bit stuffy and i don't mean nothing I don't know what other way to put that, but there has to be the laughter with it, the fun. You know, if someone comes in and it seems also stiff or stuffy, then you're going to scare people. Yeah. If you can bring them in and nurture them and say, look, come on, we're no different. We don't have two heads. We're just yeah. let, let us talk, tell you, let us show you. Then I think that maybe we could help people and allow people to grow and maybe get the numbers up as well. Yeah, I think yeah. a lot of people are getting stuff without realising, aren't they? I Definitely. mean, the way that we're fast pacing moving, but also, like, I found with people that I know, I've been amazed how what's taken some of us a long time to be um, in the flow. And some people have just like that. And you're like, wow. wow. You know, it's taken, yeah, they're more open, they're more. But you've got, I find there's a lot, you're being able to talk about it more. People are like, I was blown away in the first lockdown to walk into a supermarket and somebody turned around and start a spiritual conversation like they knew me. And I just stood there with my mouth open. <laughs> shocked. And I was like, we're in broad daylight. That I was actually looking over my shoulder thinking I was going to be ushered out at the supermarket. And I'm like, wow, how times have changed that people can talk about it freely. I think people need it at the minute. I think people need something. They need to know that there is light, they need to know there is more at the minute. People need hope. They need they need to know that they're not on their own. So many people are going come through so many different things in their own lives. And I'm not saying that mediumship will have the answers, but I just know that there is a comfort or a healing that can be given there. It mightn't take their problems away, but it can help them. It can give them, you know, we can be empathic with them. We can maybe teach them to look at things. We can maybe teach them if they're feeling this way, you know, to connect with their own loved ones, if they have that ability, that they don't always maybe need a medium. Sit and listen, you know, yeah. sit and be aware of what's around you, be aware of the signs. And simple things like that can move people. Simple yeah. things like that can brighten their day and say, oh, yeah, I got that. I know my loved ones are near. So I yeah. think that's what it's about as well. Yeah. You have a conversation with someone, is it? It's like the other day I was saying, like, it's, it can be – the silliest of thing, like, you know, the white feathers or turning on the radio and hearing a song that really resonates with you, but it's got a hidden message. And everybody has always got them going on around them, but everyone's so busy and they just don't take that just little moment in time to sit there quiet and yeah. acknowledge the fact that although they're not standing in front of you in a human form, they're never going to leave you. They're just... They're seeing everything that's going on. I didn't pay attention to my mum one time. She was coming through and I I didn't pay. Not that I was just so busy with life. Mm -hmm. And I took a wrong turn down the street and there was her name on the street. It was her name. I was like, okay, (laughs) okay. So I just sat in the car and went, okay, I'm too fast paced. I need to slow down and be aware. So sometimes that's their wee way of telling us, take a breath, take a moment, see what's around you. We don't always have to have that tunnel vision where we're always in a hurry. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And it's it, everybody's got it around them, haven't they? Oh, definitely. Definitely. You know, I think they're working so hard. And especially at this time of year, people need to know their loved ones are around them. Of course, all, all year is hard. But I think at this time of the year, and especially with everything that's going on in the world, they need to know they're not alone. They need to know what their loved ones are around them. But sometimes it just takes that wee minute to spend that extra time looking or listening or feeling sometimes that that's the best just feel them feel mm. them close to you. yeah 
Yeah, so we've got a few more questions coming. I'm sorry to interrupt the sorry, flow. I'm but you. <laughs> are making some great quotes, guys. If you want to jump in and come in the studio and actually talk to Mary, ask a question, you're more than welcome. Now, um, oh, there's a great comment from Colin as well. I'll, I'll talk about that in a sec, Colin. Um, but we've got a quick question from Liz. Um, does Reiki work long distance as well as in person? Hi, Liz, by the oh, way. Definitely. Yes, it does indeed. Yes. Um, and we can we can do certainly we can send Reiki long distance. We can use objects. So um, if somebody even sends us a photograph, we can send energy even through the likes of lives, you know, or through um we can send it. There's certainly other symbols we can use to do that as well. Yes, that's not a problem. Awesome. We've got another one from Jane Cooper. I can see that one. Have you ever given a reading that you found very difficult? And if so, how do you deal with difficult spirits or even the person having the reading? Oh, yes, I have had difficult readings. And one that comes to mind is um, I kept seeing the 4th of July, America and the 4th of July and celebrations. And I kept saying, does the 4th of July connect with you? And this particular lady says to me, nope, nope, nope. It was like one minute after 12. It was into the 5th of July. It was into the 5th of July. And I was like, all right, okay. And, you know, does the name Johnny connect? No, nope, no, nope, it was John, 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 you know. So, um, and sometimes people, readings, they, they can be really difficult, okay? But sometimes for me, that's their way of maybe not letting their guard down. Sometimes they're, it's like they say they want a reading, but then when you get close to home, it's like, no, it's not that. No, it's not that. So sometimes it's just spent enough. And, and if I don't feel that a reading is for you, I'd be honest and say, no, I, I can't read you today. And it's not your fault or it's not my fault. Maybe you're not ready or maybe I'm just not the medium for you. So either way, I will take the time. But I always try my best to work with them and sometimes it's just about breaking the barriers down see once you do break their barriers down and you get close and then you bring their loved ones through you will see they're maybe not as difficult as they're coming across you know i remember a man he booked in under the name of june or gene or something and this big guy came and he was tattooed and he was like uh, i'm doing i was like oh okay well come on on in you know it's because you'll get people booking in under different names and whatever and he was like don't believe in us don't believe in us and i says well okay and he sat there but I think it's about making them feel comfortable. It's not about you sort of sitting there doing, I'm here to do this for you. And I just start off and talk to them. And say, oh, okay, how's your day been? The weather's terrible. Take a wee moment and whatever. And if you could just spend that time and talk to them, you will see the barriers breaking down. And you'll realize they're maybe not as difficult as what they're coming across. And if it does get too much, then I'll just say, look, you know, if you don't understand it, then just know that your loved ones are with you. But maybe I'm not the medium for you. Okay. And maybe the timing's not right. But I just don't get angry at them. You know, it's just you don't know what's going on in somebody's life to make them difficult. So you just have to take yeah. that week at a time. Yeah. yeah. And they could have come to you with like a really high expectation as well, which Definitely. people do, don't they? And sometimes people don't realize, you know, mediums are human too. We don't run on autopilot. We're not perfect, you know. And, and you know, sometimes even mediums have bad days. So you don't oh, know the Oh, gosh. Reason. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's okay. But, 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 Somebody that, that taught me a lot um, said to me, Paul, there's no such thing as 100% mediumship. No. You just can't. It's a human factor that gets involved. And yeah. It, it, it really is. And forgive yourself when you have a bad day because you are allowed to have bad days. You're allowed to have a bad day. Yeah. No, nobody is perfect, you know, and there will be a lot of reasons. You know, maybe even the medium has a lock on their personal life. Maybe they're just tired, you know. There could be so many reasons why, and it's not anybody's fault, you know. But I always say, if you just be open and honest and just tell them, like, maybe I'm not the medium for you, maybe I'm having a lock on, or maybe sometimes you're just not ready. You know, I waited four years to hear from my mum because I wasn't ready. I thought I was. And I mean, I went everywhere. My poor husband got trailed all over the world, and I just wasn't ready. It was nothing to do with my mum. My mum was there. I wasn't ready. So yeah. sometimes that's the reason why as well. Yeah how do you deal with blips in terms of your own mediumship so um i don't know i mean everyone has blips along the way i'm trying to think of something i've had uh so okay an emotional situation in my life i know if i've got a personal situation in my life i know it's going to affect my mediumship um i can kind of answer my own question because i learned how to get around that but for, for those at home that are developing and let's say that they've got a personal issue going on in their life but they still want to develop 
how would you get around that is there something you would suggest or something that you've learned a technique along the way well if i have someone that's coming into my classroom and maybe i know there's a lot of personal things going on that's stopping their development i always try and make the environment that they're they're learning and safe it's near enough like i tell them we do we meditation we leave the outside worries we leave whatever's going on outside and we meditate and we just work in the energy that's created in our room in our space for me i try and keep everything separate because i need to I need to remind myself that this work isn't about me or what's going on in my life. This is about spirit. This is about helping other people. And sometimes, you know, somebody asked me something recently. It was when my son has had a lot of issues with chest, heart and stroke and whatever. And someone says to me, but how are you still working? You know, how are you still doing this? And I went, but the positive is my son's still alive. Yeah. The positive is my son's healing well. The positive is he's getting the help that is needed. So I still have to look at the positive. So no matter what's going on, and anyone knows me, knows that my life is chaotic at times, but I have to take myself out of it. It's not about me. It's about me helping Spartan, helping the person that's sitting in front of me. So sometimes it's that separation and creating that environment where maybe for that one hour or that two hours that they can maybe leave their troubles outside the door and concentrate on them. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Here's a sorry, Leanne. It's just, I've got something out. One last thing, and I'll shut up, Leanne, because I keep talking <laughs> and I'm rambling. But how about mental illness in terms of, <clears> say, <throat> someone's not necessarily depression, it might be schizophrenic, or that, you know, I've had people come to me that are hearing voices. How do you deal with that? Well, for me, I, I will sort of sit with them. I will feel until I have also had a few um, people that have came to me. And, you know, sometimes we have to admit we're not doctors. You know, we're, we're not. We can't sort of prescribe things. OK. And sometimes there is people that are hearing voices that maybe are just mediums that just don't know how to work at it. OK. Then there's other people who maybe would need that. But as a medium, you will also know and you will advise them also to, to maybe, you know, seek the help out of other people. Some people are afraid of doctors. They're afraid of what will happen if they do start talking about that. Yeah. Even even now, you know, some mediums, it's like they're afraid to talk about it because they're getting funny looks. OK. But I just sort of I try and help if I feel it's a medium or I feel it's a spiritual aspect, I will try and help them with that to take the fear away. If it's something, then I will advise them maybe to go somewhere else or to seek that wee bit of help. And I will try and help whatever way I can. But sometimes I'm not the answer. Sometimes they need more than me. Yeah. But I think yeah. it's how you approach them and let them know, you know, that there is no difference. It's like we all need that bit of help. And I think that's something that everybody needs to realize in this day and age as well. You know, we'll all sort of maybe hit a, a, wee, a blip or whatever, or we'll all, there will be people that will be dealing with mental issues or whatever. But the important thing is they're not alone, but sometimes it's not the medium that has the answer for them. Yeah. 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 Oh, you've got loads of comments on here. Yeah, I gotta say, beautiful. lovely Linda Ray. Hi, Putting Linda. them up on the yeah. It's another yeah. one there. This this is, I believe, oh. Linda Ray. Hi, Linda, because she's coming through the group. Hi, Linda. Lovely to hear from you, Hannah, as well. Everyone's saying how lovely you are to listen to. We can hear your passion in your voice, Marie. It's just it's lovely. Thank you. Are you are very inspirational. Right. So there was great, um, some great uh, words here. Uh, oh, it was a question from Effie as well. Can we get that up? Oh, I can put it on the screen. So I'm trying to filter through them because we've missed quite a few, haven't we? We have. I'm really sorry we, we're going off on tangents, but it's a great conversation. How do you work nicely with readings when Spirit had a mental illness and you're picking up the energy of the mental illness and start to feel out of sorts with the type of mental illness? Oh, I've had that. I'm not sure how the sitter will feel mentioning it. Oh, so what well, he's asking sorry, then sorry, do you want to... okay so how do i bring how do i bring someone through do i mention their mental illness i think is that what he's getting I think, at? I think she meant how do you word nicely with reading so i've had somebody i've had a few people that have come through that have had that have suffered with depression or mental illness or sometimes they'll say to me that's what took them over so they've taken their own life because of depression 
Oh, yeah, well, definitely. And, you know, and I, I can understand that. My nephew took his own life with depression. He was only 17, so I, I can understand that. But for me, I, I sort of try to say, you know, where they have went home or it was their decision to go home, if you know what I mean. It was their decision to go to the spirit world or it was their time to say they wanted to go home. And I always feel, you know, they maybe just had a low point or they felt like they couldn't communicate. And it's not that it's anybody's fault here. It's just how they were feeling. But I always emphasize as well how much hate Feeling they get over there and how that maybe they are so much they're happy and they're not maybe stuck the way people think they are okay absolutely i remember when my nephew took his own life when i remember some it was a medium actually said to me um oh you know he's going to be stuck he's you know you'll not hear from him for a while he's going to be stuck and that really that really upset me that really confused me okay and then as i went on to work with it, i realized they get the healing and the love and the attention but it is being very selective with your language when you're doing it when you're talking because this is somebody's loved one you're talking about and Absolutely. how they pass so it's being so careful and putting it across so nicely so if someone does pass with a mental illness i would say you would understand that maybe they just weren't feeling themselves and there was a lot of issues around them maybe mentally that they couldn't talk about okay or they didn't fully understand themselves and a lot of confusion with it but it's important to let you know that they they decided it was their time to go home if they took their own life they decided it was their time to go back home to know where they're getting that extra bit of love and healing and it's like they still miss the ones here obviously but it was yeah. just they felt that pull and remember it's like our grief is the love is spirit celebration of their ones coming home as well do you think though sometimes i know from my own personal experience so sometimes when they talk about mental illness or some of the more difficult aspects of their personality or things that may have happened to them that i trust in my guy to give me that information or spirit to give me that information that's relevant that's not going to offend that it's a point of evidence i think sometimes as mediums we can hold back because we feel this is really a difficult situation and we don't want to offend and i've kind of on my personal journey i've i've learned to trust and allow that to flow a bit more um but but again, that fear and that doubt, you, you kind of don't want to, you know, sometimes it can come in or sound quite harsh to us, but to the person that's about to receive it. But I think sometimes you need because, you know, if, if someone has passed through their own hand, you need to say it was their time to go. They took themselves home because that is how yeah. they passed. That is evidence. It's yeah. just in a, a way that's appropriate. You know, I don't yeah. like it into maybe sometimes you know, I, I don't think all the time we need to go into exactly how they pass. You know, sometimes yeah. if there is medication, that's fine or something like that. But I don't like to go into the in depth because I think all the recipient need to know is that they took themselves home. They crossed themselves over. And then the more evidence you can give to back that up without getting into heart i think that's enough for them okay yeah. and i do feel yes of course it and i do trust my guides will only show me and only allow me to give out what the person in front of me needs so it is and i just like to make sure i bring it across as sympathetic as i can but by while being truthful yeah because yeah. I, think I have to be truthful in all my readings so but doing it in a way where i don't defend but giving them the details that they need yeah I think it's a, a a real stumbling block for mediums that when you get particularly difficult information. That's a great question, Effie. Thank you. Oh, is this a question? Well, it's Colin, and I'm glad you put it up because it's a great quote, <coughs> Colin. Hi, Colin. People are skeptical. So we're talking about people being skeptical. People are skeptical because a because it is the unknown. B because there are those who fake it. But more importantly, C because we have been indoctrinated into scientific belief. Science wants tangible proof that the non-physical exists, and yet if there is such proof, the existence of spirit will immediately be dismissed. So quite interesting, interesting comment. Definitely, but science will always want proof, you know, that the scientists will always want to prove. And I do believe, you know, there will be a time when maybe they will. They're already looking at brain waves of mediums when they're and the brain waves when they're doing trance and things like that there yeah. as well. So I know that there will be a time when they might be able to prove, you know, that there is more that is happening. But 
you know, it's like I say, I have a wee saying on my board all the time, and it's like faith there's a soul to go beyond what the eyes can see, you know. So sometimes having that faith, it'll take you that wee bit deeper because, you know, we all talk about religion and yet they talk about whether it doesn't matter what God you worship or whatever, yet not everybody sees it, but they believe in some type of God. So, you know, it's not always about what you can see or what you can prove. Sometimes about what you feel is more important or what you know. And for me... I just I just know that my my passion for spirit and I just know that there is that connection and it can be hard for anybody that maybe hasn't been touched by spirit or understand it, you know, to have that because I can't offer them proof except for when we do mediumship, we'll do our best to give as much evidence. But like I say, sometimes you can give everybody all the evidence in the world and if they don't want to believe, there's nothing you can do to make them. Yeah, yeah definitely. As you touched on trance, I thought I'd bring this up. <laughs> Um, is trans mediumship when our loved ones uses your physical body to speak to us or do they speak to us in their voice? Okay, well, sometimes um, trance, it can be guides um, or it can be loved ones, yes, but I, it, sometimes it can be their voice. It'll depend on the medium as well. Sometimes your voice will change and sometimes it doesn't. And there's a whole big debate around this. Some people believe trance should be natural and, of course, you're going to hear your own voice. Others will believe that trance is coming, you know, as it is coming from spirit world and it is spirit speaking through you, that your voice should change, okay? And I do believe and I, I know from sitting in trance and I do know know that I have heard other people your voice will change so it is your loved ones it can be guides coming through because trance is also about educating us it's about giving us maybe that word that talk from the spirit world and allowing them to hold our attention if you like okay and it's, it's a refined aspect of mediumship so it is but yes it is and it's a lovely blending of energy of either as I say the people from spirit blending with us and allowing the medium and the spirit to become as one so that they can be they can use our voice yeah. Well, question. So I know you do trance. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to? Oh, I was sitting in trance for a brave while. So it was, you know, and even see getting over that fear. You think you have mediumship and then you're doubting about that. And then you go into something else and then you go, am I just hearing this? Should I be saying this? So you near enough put a block up. So it is near enough like yeah. going through all that all over again. So it is. And it takes a long time. For you to withdraw your awareness from the here and now and allow you know your conscious mind to be subdued and to let them sort of not take over but to let them have that wee bit of control so that they can sort of use your voice when you say a wee time so <laughs> we're i'm sitting here thinking maybe two <coughs> sorry how long how long did you sit and develop for before you really felt that you had the presence of spirit with you Truthfully, um, I felt spark, but I think for me there was a bit of fear of maybe letting go completely. Yeah. Or um, for me, that spark, not that it scared me. It's like I was going, oh, is this right? Or will I not be able to get back? Or can I not control this? And so it was more about my fear. So I had to sit for, I would say, at least a year, okay? And then I was able to talk and let go. And even at that, you know, there was bits and pieces, but... I still questioned, is this me? Is this spirit? You know, is this my voice? What is happening? So there's still all the doubts and the fears when you're starting off with trance. But if you can just let yourself go and realize that there is no fear, it's just their way of blending and their way of coming through. And some of the lovely words that will come through, the education that will come through with trance is beautiful. And it just shows you how close that they do work with us. Can I ask you a personal question? Yeah. All right, personal, not too personal, but uh, it's literally. Yeah, I'll you your, yeah. I'll be careful there. Yeah, uh, on your own, on your own uh, path. Have you found? Uh, how can I say this? A lot of people start to have dreams, and when they start to develop, or start to open, they start to kind of get become aware of that psychic mechanism within themselves. Do you find though, as a medium, that sometimes? You travel into the astral. Are you aware or consciously aware of that travel, or is it something you're not aware of? Because I know I, I was only recently I've started to do that. I, I do. I had a lot of dreams that were more like precognitive dreams before. Um, you know, I had told my husband a lot of things that was happening before it had happened in our family. It didn't happen right yeah. away, but it did happen. And then I did astral. I did leave my body at one point, yeah, and that was actually, 
I do believe I went to a different place. So, yes, I do believe that. Uh, uh, can I ask you a question on that astral right there? So I'm really interested in astral travel because I believe that we can all do it to a point. Definitely. What was your experience with the astral travel? Well, for me, I actually felt myself lift out and I could see myself sleeping and yeah. was literally taken to another place. And yet I still felt I had a connection with my body. But I knew that I was going to, but I could see my body still sleeping. And that scared me because when I did come back, I felt near enough like the paralysis. Yes. Afterwards, it's like that, like coming in and just like lying there and just being aware of how you couldn't move. Okay. But at the same time, excited. I was like, oh my God, did that really just happen? You know, um, so yes, it was exciting. Was you aware of the etheric cord or the uh, yes, silver cord or something? The connection, yes. Yep. The connection okay. of my body, yeah. And consciously, your experience whilst leaving the physical body, sorry, I'm asking too many questions on this. No, consciously, okay. on, on leaving the physical body, yes. Uh, how lucid was your experience? How uh, was the energy around you? What I'm trying to say, was you travelling through the aura? Because uh, somebody else I know travelled into the astral and they said, oh, there's seven layers. What are seven layers of the auric field? Well, mine's no, mine's wasn't like that. Now, to be honest, I seen myself um, coming. I le left it above my body. I was still connected, but I went to a different place. Okay. And it wasn't like the, I didn't go through the seven. I didn't go through the different realms or into the or that. I just went to a completely different place and enjoyed. And I remember describing this place. And when I came back in the next morning, I told my husband and described the big water tower, all I had seen around me. And then I went and I had to try and find out where this place was. Okay. So I went on looking for the landmarks that I had seen when I sort of went on my travels and I narrowed it down. And it, yeah, so I found out where it was. Yeah. Did you know in America that they actually, there was, I can't remember, I, for life of me, I can't remember, but someone uh, was charged with murder. And it was based on astral projection. So no. I don't know how. We're... So it's a real phenomenon. It's really an interesting <clears throat> aspect of not just mediumship. I know people that have had out of body experiences, they're not sure what they're having. But it seems to be happening a lot more lately. So I find that really quite yeah. interesting. Well, I said to you the, um, last week, I think it was. Uh, yeah, I did. I tend to do a lot of work at night. And um, I went to my daughter and son in law's home. <laughs> This is really funny, right? No, it was about three o'clock in the morning. Okay, so I walked up their stairs, and I walked into my daughter's bedroom, and I was doing healing on her. Okay, and then after I'd finished doing the healing on her, I walked out of their bedroom, walked into my grandchildren's bedroom to check on them both, and then left. The next day, my grandson said to me, "Nanny, I know you come in to our house at night," <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "That's awesome." <laughs> Brilliant. I know, I felt like a burglar. I felt really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd done this kind of thing and no one knew. <laughs> uh, there's not much we're going away with, sure there's not. <laughs> uh, well, I we could talk about this and talk to you all night. Honestly, it's been fantastic. Thank you for coming on. Uh, it's that time of night where we kind of do some work and some messages. It'll be lovely to see you guys. If you want to come in the studio, you feel free uh and we'll just work together and see what happens now how we normally work marie is we uh connect with somebody as, as you would normally and then we give the information and people oh we've got a moderator just popped up on screen are you, are you okay dylan oh no he's gone again that's uh, dylan in the background i'm not <laughs> he sure was if he, coming in he wanted a message <laughs> maybe he wanted a message i don't know I don't know. So um we'll share the we'll share the uh link on oh he's put sorry guys, that's okay. It's, it's, it would be good to see you, Dylan. I know he doesn't want to come on. Uh I'm just gonna copy the link in there. If you want to come in, come in. Sean's come in already. Hi Sean. And um, we'll just work that way and see who comes through. Did you want to go first? Okay, yeah. Oh, um, just put you right on the spot then, I'm like, boom. Okay, you're all right. Uh, I think they're doing that. <laughs> Straight out of the deep end, isn't that what they say? Yeah. Okay. For those that are at home listening or watching, it's really nice if you could bring a loved one into mind and just think of that person that you might want to hear from. It does act as a magnet. It draws our loved ones closer. Okay. All right. 
So first of all, I'm becoming aware of a lady and I know that she is mum. OK, I know with her that she gives me that there is a cancerous condition that will affect her lungs and especially in particular one of her right lung. She's given me the right lung was worse affected. So I don't know if that's where the tumor was or if that was affected the most. But I know that she's given me that her lungs and her breathing was affected as well. I know as well that she gives me that there was four people with her when she passes to spirit because it feels like she's given me one at the bottom of the bed, two to my left, and one at the right hand side. I know with her also that she gives me that there is a significant bruise just above the middle finger here because somebody kept rubbing her hand. Okay. If anyone can take the information, please let us know on the messages. Just let us know. You don't have to come in the studio. It would just be lovely to connect. There is and Elizabeth or lily as well that would connect with her and i know also that she goes downhill very quickly it's like she is diagnosed and goes down literally within um a few short weeks or a few short months okay okay that's pretty specific information that's come through anyone can take this information just let us know in the chat and we'll go from there yeah and yeah we've still got and also guys it'd be lovely to like and share as well just share just share be really good to get the energy up get it out there to people that'll be fantastic and it's that you know difficult time of year as well and i know a spirit are really working hard at the moment for those that uh, with covid at the moment it's really pulling on people and the, the spirit are always here trying to give messages of hope and not to fear covid we are not to fear okay anybody there's nothing uh we speak at the moment i've got someone stepping in with me as well so i might have to start as well in a minute so but they might be connected so i'm not sure marie so i'm not sure i'll give it a few moments can anyone take this information about this lovely lady who would have had the cancer right, i can take the, okay thomas says i can take this as my grandmother let me put this up on screen for you i can take this as my grandmother uh but i did live with her when i was a kid and her name was elizabeth lily perfect okay oh, we've also got jane as well hi jane and trevor lovely to see you guys so we've got two people taking it if you can give us some more information that would be lovely Okay, I did feel like a mum figure and I know as well that um, the chest area is important. I know as well and I do feel like her daughter was with her when she passes because her daughter sat at the right hand side with her. I know that her daughter gave her permission to go because it feels like she's making me aware. She whispered into my right ear. She told me that it was all right to go. She told me I didn't need to fight anymore. I know as well that she talks about how she was looked after because she's putting cream on my hands and I know as well so I know her daughter would have looked after her and Give her dignity and her feet was cold she keeps giving me cold feet so i know that her daughter would have rubbed her feet because i know oh, she's where it's like lovely. her fingers. do you understand this does she understand that yeah so we got jane is taking the information okay. so thanks right. thomas if we think this is for jane Okay, Jane, so um, I just feel with her that she's just saying thank you so much for letting me go. She has memories of you combing her hair and pulling her like her fringe over to the right hand side so that it sits perfectly because she says as she lost the weight, it's like it didn't look like her. So I know that she's thanking you for fixing her hair. She just makes me aware as well of the cardigan that has been left behind or the cardigan that you can smell or the cardigan that has her essence on it because she says uh -huh. at the minute you're missing her so badly and you hold it close to your heart as well i know also that she gives me there's a birthday or anniversary around may time and i know as well she says how you kept rubbing the wee bruise on her hand and how you did her proud would you understand all of that jane yeah sometimes it's a bit slow with the messages so we think jane thinks this is for her so we don't know It'd be lovely if you can jump in on the link guys it's lovely to see your your decorations at christmas if you can get in that'd be brilliant so some of the links work in some of the platforms i know um oh yes ah yeah. oh, here we go here we go so jane's come back with this yes i did when she was in the chapel of rest yes 
Okay. And Jane, I know as well that your mom would tell me that there is like a memory box of bits and pieces with her. And I do feel that she's making me aware that your mom also wore glasses. And I do feel that somebody has these glasses. I also feel as well that your mom would know like a William or a Billy as well, because I know that that name would connect. And I know that your mom loves this time of the year because she takes me she takes me in the right now and she shows me she would have had all envelopes lined up. She would have had everything sorted. And I just know as well that she gives me that there is like a birthday card or a Christmas card with her writing still on it that you would have. Da -da. Yes, her father. Okay. Um, I just feel as well that um, she's making me aware, be aware of this Christmas card falling out or be aware because at the minute you talked to her and you were talking to her actually before we came on the show tonight. You were talking to her before we came on the show tonight and you, you asked her for a bit of strength and a bit of guidance. And she says, but sweetheart, you know, I never really left you. You know that I still love you because you whispered even uh -huh. when she said out and she, you told her. You told her you loved her, and she says, but, I, you know, I couldn't have told you often enough, sweetheart, and I'm still around, okay? And your mum is just making me aware. Um, the birthday that is coming up or the birthday that is to be celebrated because she want, your mum's a real happy lady, and she wants you to celebrate things. She wants you to be happy. She wants you to continue moving forward, okay? And know that she's the backbone that's pushing you. She says you're a bit upset, but she's drying your tears at the minute as well, okay? So she's trying to give you that wee bit of help and healing. And you know what? It's like raise a glass, whether it's water or wine, it's up to you, but raise a glass for her and know that she's celebrating Christmas with you. Take her love, take her strength. Take her determination and her blessings. Okay. Mine was on the 18th, she says. Okay. Lovely. She was just wishing you a happy birthday and she was celebrating it with you. Okay. That's awesome. Take your mum's love. Your mum's a lovely, lovely lady and she's very much around you, but she's just wiping your tissue. Your mum had a wee tissue up her sleeve all the time as well because she's just showing me she's giving you a tissue to, to dry your eyes and to let you know I, she's got you. She's got you. Okay. And she's your backbone, just like you were hers. It's you and her against the world. Nothing has changed. Take her love and take her blessing. And I hope that's helped you. Awesome. Thank you. Do you want to do another one? Because that was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> that was lovely. It's lovely to watch somebody else work for a change. <laughs> yes, she always had tissues. Yeah. Good. Good. She, lovely one. She always had tissues. Thank you, Good. Jane. Merry Christmas, guys. Yeah, definitely. Merry, Merry Christmas. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. that helped her. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping to get a message out. Well, this this is lovely. <laughs> <laughs> no, you said last time you wouldn't give me yours live. <laughs> That's true. That is true. We've got a few people coming in the back as well. We've got Doris in the back room as well. Hi, Doris. Lovely to see you. Okay. Okay. Um... Okay, I have a gentleman with me now, and I know that this gentleman passes very quickly. I feel like he takes me around the heart area, or I feel like there's issues because it's so sudden, it is so quick, it is so out of the blue, because it feels like he didn't get saying goodbye to anybody. It feels like there was no time for goodbyes. It feels like everything happened so quickly. It's like he's given me, I fell asleep. And then I woke up in spirit. That's literally how quick it works, okay? And it feels like he's making me aware of the name John and the name Jim or James that would connect as well. And I know also that he gives me the 16th of a month that would connect in and around him as well. And I know that there is a July connection that would connect around him as well. So okay, hopefully somebody can... Stands out and let us know. And it does feel like Dad. I've got yeah. to be honest, I felt him. And uh, when I said I wanted, I wanted to, you to do another reading, he's been standing here most of oh. the moment. So oh, I know he would have passed with a heart attack because he was telling me. Um, absolutely spot on. So uh, me, Marie, Patricia Anderson. Okay, we're just going to keep going. Uh, 
Okay. So I know as well that he makes me aware that there is issues because he showed me that he had like his own armchair that he would have sat in. And I know as well that he shows me his remote controls down the side of it. I know also that there is a birthday anniversary around August time with him. And I know that this is what I would call like an old fashioned man's man, quite set in his ways. I know as well that there's a black and white photograph of him either walking up a road or somewhere like the center of the road that somebody has captured. And I do feel as well that there is like um, newspaper cuttings or clippings as well of him. Yeah, so please keep those messages. If you think this is for you guys, keep those messages rolling in. I'll, I can then help Marie and it really keeps the, the messages flowing. It helps us to maintain the link because when we have to look at the messages, we can sometimes jump out yep. of the power a little bit. So I'm just going to keep it going. Yes, that's right, Marie, says Patricia. Okay. Thank you, Patricia. I know as well that he shows me that there is um there is animals as well because he gives me two horses. So I know as well he must have he must have had a horse and this must have been like a dark brown black horse with like bits of white at the tail because and he's also shown me he loves animals because I know as well that there's there is a dog in spirit with him also. So very um very friendly, very orientated man, animals, animals, animals around him. Okay. And I know as well that he makes me aware about the black leather strap watch that somebody has with him and the name of tommy or thomas he had he had two okay all right um okay i know also with him that he's making me aware um very good with his hands so i know as well that he's not afraid of hard work okay and i'll tell you because he's given me blisters along the bottom of his fingers okay and it feels like he's making me wear quite rough hands and i know also that he's given me um a near enough want to be down at uh the titanic or down at harlan and wolf here in belfast so i know there must be connections to harlan and wolf or, or belfast here because it feels like he's given me family tree as well he talks about the split or the, the the separation within family or like people not seeing eye to eye or on different paths because it feels like it feels near enough like we're and it's been going on a long time, but it feels like a near enough wanna bang heads together, or it feels like I wanna I want people to realise that life is too short. Can you understand that, Patricia? Not sure. She's not pinged up yet it might be um going up to the satellite and then coming back down oh yeah spot on marie she says thank okay. you all right because it feels like making me work there's also a lot of healing being sent to you as well at the minute patricia okay because it feels like making me aware the tummy area has been giving you a bit of problem and so has the right leg especially below the knee and i know also as i work with your dad he's given me that there was a scar below his right knee a scar just below the kneecap and a scar in and around the ankle area from when he was younger Don't know. We'll wait for that one. Okay. That is wonderful. Guys, keep sharing because we're going to try and do one more. Sometimes they pick up, ping up so quick, don't they? And other times it's really slow. Yeah, it can be. It's it's just, oh, yes, yeah. yes, true. Yes, true. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just know that he steps forward as well. It's near enough like where he's wanting to hug you or he's want, and he actually would have give like big bear hugs because it feels like he wants to give like a big bear hug. He wants to say, I'm your strength. He wants to say, don't feel so alone. He's hugging you from the spirit world, especially now because it feels like at nighttime, especially around about 10 past two in the morning when you're sitting looking at your phone or 10 past two in the morning when you're sitting looking at your messages. Know that I'm around you. I'm giving you that support at the minute. I'm giving you that wee bit of strength. You're not on your own and you don't have to be. You're actually stronger. It's like he's giving me, remember where you came from. Remember how strong and remember how much I love you. Okay. Because I'll tell you why he's telling me that you kissed him on the forehead and you just touched his cheek when he was laid out to rest because he's blown kisses back i love that that's awesome marie thank you can we squeeze in one more is that possible <laughs> one more so, we'll, we'll do one yeah more. please okay uh okay oh look patricia's but it was always my strength Oh, sorry. Oh, keep we keep jumping. Oh, at you. And there's a lovely one there as well. Yeah. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, Thomas. It would be my privilege. <laughs> okay, so one more. Okay, so let me see who we have. It's interesting watching the space behind you, actually. Yeah, they're all building. You see the whole yeah. energy. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I know I have a wee gathered. I'm just trying to see who who wants to jump forward. Okay, so what I am going to do or who I'm going to work with, I know, again, I do feel I have a younger man, okay, with me. I know that there's a name like D or David or Davy that would connect in and around him. I do feel as well that there is something to do with, like, I keep seeing, like, a road traffic accident. So, um, I do feel this is an accident that he passes through and I do feel he passes very quickly either at the scene or I do feel he passes as, as soon as he hits hospital but I know it's quite tragic and I know as well with him that he gives me there was a lot of speed involved and I do feel that he's making me aware and I do feel it's not like a motorway I do feel it's like on just a two lane road because I can see trees at either side of the road so would anybody understand this gentlemen? Yeah, Leanne <laughs> I can if no one else can take before. it oh really? <laughs> Awkward. Okay, no more joking. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, would you understand all of that, Leanne? Yes? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll wait and see also if anybody else can take it. I'm just going to give a wee bit more. I know with him, I feel like he's a bit of a laugher. I feel like I have a bit of a joker. I feel like I want to wind up. I feel like he wants me to laugh and mess you about because I feel like this would be his personality. Would you understand that? I know that. also you can take it as well. We've got three people have a taken yeah. it at the moment. So okay, that's well, I'm gonna awesome. keep working, see. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We've got three other people. This is great. I love this when this happens. I, I, I also know as well that he shows me that there is angel wings or a bobble on the tree for him. And I know as well that there was flowers and a plaque placed at where he passes on this road because he shows me like a plaque and he, I know he shows me like a circle of flowers or a wreath of some sort that was that was placed where he passed. Okay. Yeah, don't know if anyone else can take that. Yeah. There must be a name similar to mine, like Marie, Maria, Mary, that type of name, because it feels like he keeps pointing at me. So there's a name similar to mine that would connect in around him as well, like Mary, Marie, Maria. Okay. And I know also that he's making me aware. Um, do you know what? Somebody had just seen him or was talking to him not long before this happened, because it feels like he was talking about he had been he had just been on the phone to somebody or he'd been talking to somebody before he got into the car or something but somebody had been in contact with him not long before he passed okay yeah, somebody else is yes continue. trevor's trevor's taking yeah. this i think um <clears throat> good do you understand okay. that as well leanne yeah okay Okay. Just gonna keep going. We're making you work. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I know also that he, he's just shown me as well. I know as well there's a lot of head impact, or I know as well there would have been issues around the head area. Okay. And I know also that he gives me that there is like a birthday and an anniversary very, very close. So I do feel there's a birthday around his passing because he gives me a happy and a sad time together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And do you know what? I do feel like there is somebody here who actually looks like him or has his mannerisms or something because it feels like he, it's like every time they look at the person here, like I'll never be gone. It's like I'm still here when they turn their face up or when they say a funny remark. It's like uh, um, I will still be here when they see that. Do you understand that? Yep. Are you okay? So I've got my little goosebumps all over me. <laughs> Sorry. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, it just feels like he's making me aware. It's like sometimes you sit and look at people and it's like it, it brings you right back. It's like you're seeing him all over again. Okay. Yeah. And it feels like he's making me aware. But that's the special moments. Okay. That's the special moments when you know that Spur connects. I feel like, do you know what? He's given me as well where the, there must have been like a drink raised for him or there must have been a wee drink or something. Do you understand this? Before he passed. Yeah. Okay, because it just feels like he's given me a wee drink. Okay, but I also know as well that he's given me that people came together and there was things done for him as a mark of respect as well. Okay, because he was well thought of. All right, and I know I can hear that. Um, 
oh what do you call that film too fast too furious as well so yeah. i know there's a connection with like that too fast too furious or a song from that film or whatever because my boys watch that i don't know the film i don't know all of it but there's something to do with the connection from that or a song from that film would you understand that i'm not sure about that but i you know it doesn't mean to say it doesn't it hasn't happened he, he loves cars he yeah. loves cars okay because he loves the wheels he loves the entertainment system he loves the sound he loves everything about it and he loves hand and there's something to do as well where somebody has a white car or somebody was talking about a white car because it feels yeah. like it's me that as well okay so i know that he shows me that do you understand that do you, um, I've, he's brought me through before about the white car so i do know okay. he has yeah it's like a bmw I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yeah. the mix. That's actually that's actually linking into somebody else in my family. Oh, oh that's okay. Right, that's okay. So he's just aware we're somebody else, or, or that's fine. And I know also that he's making me aware. And without getting into your business, because I don't want to go until it, it's feels like he's saying you've had a wee bit of a hard ride the last few years. It's been a wee bit of a roller coaster of emotions, if that would make sense. Okay. But he's telling me where well, you're not one for actually letting people see you cry because you do your crying in bed or you do your crying when you're on your own. And he says, But honey, I wipe your tears. But honey, you're not on your own. Okay. Because he shows me you face down in a pillow crying into a pillow do you understand this okay and he's trying to he's trying to he's trying to touch your heart he's trying to let you know that you're not on your own i know as well that there is somebody that loves candles can i can i stop you sorry to interject i literally heard the song uh see you again and i think that's what zoe was on about the song see you again because i kept hearing that song yeah. when i see you again so zoe i've it could also be a connection to Zoe as well. Okay. I'm just going to um, keep going. Sorry. I do, feel, I, I do feel drawn towards Leanne, if that's okay. Yeah, that's um, fine. Because it feels like you keep showing me you land face down because you're like that on the pillow, if that makes sense, okay? And I know with you that he's trying to, he's trying to build your confidence. He's trying to say, you've got this and you have got this. But I also know that you have let other people affect you in many different ways but I can into your business, if that makes sense. I also feel that he's given me that there is healing being sent for someone in your family at the minute, if that makes sense as well. Because I know that there's a few issues that you're a bit worried about that I'm not going to go into, but I just know it's important to let you know that he's sending healing from where he is, okay? Mm -hmm. And can I just say one thing before I leave him? Stop thinking about how he passed. Think about how he lived. Mm -hmm. And stop thinking about how much time you didn't get with him. And think about how many memories were made while he was here, okay? Because mm -hmm. he doesn't want you to think about how he died. He wants you to think about how he lived. And I just know it's not goodbye. It's just until we meet again. Thank you. Okay. Beautiful, thing. beautiful. Okay. Love that. And I hope Marie, that was okay for you. <laughs> Marie, it's that has been wonderful. And and what a fantastic way to finish off spiritual talk for 2021. And it, yeah, it's just a joy to watch you work. And it was lovely. Carol's just said as well in a private chat that she Googled that song and it is in that film. Oh, was it? Oh, ha yeah. happy day, Sam. <laughs> yeah, see you again. Awesome. See you again. Well, that, there you go. That's his way of saying he will see. It's not goodbye. He'll see you again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, we can't thank you. We'll have to get you back on again. Yeah. No problem. We definitely will. No it's problem. Been great. We could, I mean, we only, we only, like we didn't message. even. You get a chance to go back over these. You've got some beautiful messages left yeah. on here. Yeah. And thank you for the guys that came in the back room as well. Sorry you didn't get a message. But that's we can never control who comes through. It yeah. just allows it to flow in. So, but yeah, I just want to take this opportunity to say Merry Christmas to everyone, and and we'll see you in the new year in twenty twenty two. Yes. I just yeah, and uh, I hope everyone stays out of the whole COVID thing, and I hope we all stay safe and stay well. Yeah, we're not here next week, so uh, we'll be back in in January, having a week off. Yes. <laughs> And we are <laughs> and we're back with the lovely uh, Elaine Forbes. So really looking forward to that. So it's but really brilliant. Over so, Christmas, if anyone's struggling or anything, use our page, reach out. Yeah, we're absolutely. There. So, you know, absolutely. just because we're not on here, you're not in our hearts and we're not thinking of you. So don't don't suffer in silence. Contact yeah. us. Yeah, absolutely. We've got this spiritual talk group. And it's nice for people to to use it and to connect with each other. It's a perfect opportunity. Yeah. So, yeah, happy Christmas, everyone.
Happy and Christmas, we'll... everybody, and thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks again, Marie. It's been it's brilliant. Been thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone, and we will see you all soon. On the Take other care. side, as they say. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.